But it's a, it's quite a beautiful little piece. Is is it? What, what do you know? Who made the the vase? Jerpoint. Or? It's. Oh, Jerpoint. I don't think I, I don't think I know them. Who are they? Are they? Uh, They're. It's a beautiful piece of yeah, glass. Yeah. Light. Yeah. Can you see it there? It's yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Sure. And this is a leader's award. Right. That was given to me at the Fianna Fáil Ardesh, which oh, yeah. was held last, was held on the 23rd of February right. out in City West, a great thing. And it's like old home week for Fianna Fáil. Right. And 10 people from all over Ireland were selected to give or to receive a Leaders Award. And this is what I received. Oh, nice. So it was absolutely um, fabulous. I was very pleased to get it. And we were given the award for our work for Fianna Fáil. So I've been involved with Fianna Fáil since the early 1990s, right. starting with Dick Roach. And very, very simple. I was just asked to come down and help out at a common meeting. And I stayed with Fianna Fáil for a number of years. And then the option came to run for the local elections into 1999. Okay. I came to Greystones in 1973, Paul. Wow. So, and this year, it's a big celebration for me because I personally am 50 years living in Ireland. I came oh, to Ireland when I amazing. got married in March 1969. Right. And lived in Shannon and then in Dublin and came to Greystones in 1973. Wow. And as you very well know, there was very little in Greystones in those days. There was sure. Um, ma there were three estates built and three estates being built, and one of them was Rathdown Park. There was forty-seven houses and fifteen pubs. I think yes. that was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now it's coffee houses. There yeah. you go. So I've stuck with Fianna Fáil. It was a tough year. Um, I have to say, the worst time canvassing was two thousand and eleven. Right. That was a very bad year. It was kind of dark days for Fianna Fáil. Right. Right. But we've kind of come around. And funny enough, in two thousand and eleven. The local elections returned the most Fianna Fáil councillors in the whole country. Ah. So of all the parties that ran, Fianna Fáil got the most councillors. So I think that was a recognition right. of our work on the ground. And I served as a town councillor and a county councillor. And this year, we have, fa we have two fabulous candidates here in right. Greystones. We have Elaine Willis and Councillor Jerry Walsh, who's seeking re-election. He's right. done a superb five years. And Elaine yeah. knows the town better than most of us. And then throughout the county, we have excellent candidates coming up as well. There are six local electoral areas this year because Bray has been split. Right. So there'll be four councillors elected from Bray East and four councillors from Bray West. Here in Greystones, yeah. we have six seats that we have to get right. elected for. So we're quite a candidate. Now, but this is my work for Fianna Fáil, so that's we, why I'm uh, here today. We should ask you, hugely dedicated to Fianna Fáil. I, I don't know whether during those dark days or any other dark days, any... any Flirtation with Fine Gael or anything else? Did you ever ever People think of going over to the to dark me. side? Actually, they told me that when I was running, I should, I should run as an independent. Into right. this. now, we're talking about two thousand and nine. Okay. But I wouldn't do that. No, right. I wouldn't. You know, and and I've obviously paid the political price for it. Yeah. But I do believe in the ethos. And um, I had a daughter years ago. She was interviewed by Twink when Twink went around to the schools. Boom. Um, the legendary the Twink. Days, yes, and Twink Twink asked the children, you know, what does Fianna Fáil stand for what does Fianna Fáil do mm. and my daughter said Fianna Fáil votes for people ba -boom. so it's always been a party that has had the average person if you go back through the years and you have to remember it's it's a republican party we have to remember Ireland is a republic right which not a lot of countries are and it's a very safe republic de democratically because what goes into the ballot box Comes out the other end. I should ask now, back in the Boston days, before moving here, yes. I don't know whether it was the Kelleher surname, the Irish roots would have been there. Was it always? My mother, right. MacDonald. Okay. So there would be MacDonald's in County Donegal, and they're ah. still there. And it would be Griffin from Limerick, from Limerick ah. City. Right. So that would be the connection. And now, of course, there's, there's my family. I have four mm. children. I yeah. have six grandchildren. So it doesn't take long to get the next generation going and like yourself being long term in Greystones in particular you can see just how the place has grown I mean yeah. 2000, 1973 my family needed one house right. 2003 if my children only have one house each it's, mm. it's five houses yeah, yeah. and if their children only have if they only have two children, then it's 13 houses. So you can see... Oh, we're the most popular girl at the yes. dance. Everybody wants to... it's a wonderful to... place to live, Greystones. Is. Sure. And I'm proud of what, 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 yeah. what I did for Fianna Fáil, what people before me did for Fianna Fáil, and what 
currently councillor Walsh is the sitting councillor. Well, do you feel politics has changed a lot, a lot in, in, in your time with Fianna Fáil and in this country? I mean, obviously things like social media change, how people, you know, reach out and we can see that with Trump and all that. But has the politics itself become harder, do you think? is it? That's what we're all trying to figure out. OK, right. because the local elections coming up. So now that's the thing. What do all the parties do? What they should be doing? What should they be doing in right. order to get their candidates elected? Obviously, social media is a big thing. In 2009, mm. that's what Simon Harris did when he ran. Yeah. It was social media, it was Facebook, it was bottles of water, it was giving out sweets, it was giving out oranges. That was a big change for us. Yeah. But you know what? People still like to have their doorbell rung. I never got an orange. Did you give out oranges? I didn't know Simon did. That's outrageous. Oh, Simon did. I'll have to talk to him about that. I never got an orange or a sweet. No, no. Outrageous. No sweets. Ah, no. No sweets. That's not right. That's not right. (laughs) <laughs> no, well, you missed out big time then. Oh, man. I think he's gone beyond that now. Okay. He did that, that, that. So those are the catchy things that have come on stream since my days. In, in my days, early days, it was it was shoe leather. Okay. And it was knowing where your Fianna Fáil votes were. And it was knowing who your people were. And it was knowing the issues. And it was yeah. having a track record in the town independently of politics. So you'd be involved in committees. You'd be involved in the different groups. You'd be on education boards, you'd yeah. be doing the parents' association, so that when you went to the door, people actually knew your face and knew what you were doing. But there's a different climate now for in the world, and, and it goes right across the board for, pe- for people in power, from celebrities to politicians to, to a most authority uh, a, a figure, authority figures. There's an old saying, and it's been rearranged now, that if you're approached by a guard or a priest, go and find a stranger quick. And there is that feeling that the, the world has changed now where they don't trust anything, where they feel everything's corrupted and everything's the man and everything is not on their side. It's there. Yes, yeah. it is there. I have to acknowledge it. I have, yeah. You do have to be careful about what you read in the papers and how you see it because whether there's a deliberate bias or not, everybody has a personal bias. So if you're writing a story innocently now as a journalist... Mm you would kind of put your own feelings there. Some of the manipulation of the media is deliberate. Some of it sure. is just the way things well, are. Well, propaganda so in many cases, So you do have to be yeah. and you do have to keep an open mind. And I know myself, lots of times I've sent in press releases to the paper and there might be a little bit of a mistake and, and the information would come back correct, incorrectly. Even though right. I would have sent in one thing, it comes back another. Sure. So you do have to be careful. There is a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of manipulation, and particularly on the social media, in sure. terms of what stories get boosted, what stories get eliminated, what stories don't get followed. Well, I'm a firm on. believer not sponsoring because it's forcing your, 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 your site or whatever onto other people's pages. And I just think if they want to read, yes. they can come and find yes. you. The idea yes. of pushing it on their yes. wall. There's and nothing this. better, yeah. though, than being seen on the ground, being involved in the community, knocking on people's doors. You know, up every driveway, down every lane, and you get to see. They, they can actually see you in the. That sounded like you were going to start singing there. You, you were telling me to start singing. That sounded up every driveway, down every lane. That just sounds like the beginning of a song to me. Well, it could be. I have to, I'll put some words on it. Okay. There you and go. people, as well as that, people actually like to be asked for their vote. Sure. That people actually like you to say to them, Can I have your number one? Right. Okay. They actually do like to see that, and there's nothing like seeing the candidate because you know we're talking now about the local elections. I'm ta- the, the focus mm. now for Fianna Fáil and all the it's parties the is the local the, elections. Right. Yes. So that's where our focus is at the moment, and it's very important work. The, the councillors are, are just about as important as the TDs. Right. They're the ones that buy the land. They're the one on your behalf. They sell the land on your behalf. They do the zoning. Yeah. They do the development plans. They decide where the houses are going to go, where the roads are going to go. Yeah. So you're talking about serious business, and you'd want to have a good track record going in as a candidate, and then you'd also want to have a good track record, which I feel we do in Fianna Fáil, yeah. uh, particularly in Greystones now. Councillor Jerry Walsh has been our councillor, and we have Elaine coming on board. Yeah. You want to have a good track record seeking re-election. Sure. I should, I should wrap up by asking whether... You have an idea of you, you've been involved in the community deeply in many different roles, and and it's been a huge benefit to the town. I mean, I know myself; I can get days where I just feel I'd love to be able to just hand my badge in and and, and take a, a long vacation because it can be hard work, and other times it can be incredibly rewarding. Do you yourself have an idea of well, I'll do this for another five years, ten years, twenty years, or is it a, a bop till you drop thing? Do you feel I I don't want to even think about when it might 
end. That the I'll just... only thing that I would be concerned about for me personally, I mean, I'd be happy to go on, but mm. we were out today, at, you very kindly covered Professor Noel Mulcahy's yeah. funeral on your Great Stones Guide and another piece of the, you know, your viewers yeah. can see it. I'd just be very conscious about succession. I mean, I can't do it forever. Sure. So I would just like to think that the things that I perhaps initiated, that I'm doing them in such a way that they continue. Like I was the one years ago, I was one of the first, I was actually one of the first committee members for the Holy Rosary Parish Development Committee. Right. And we got the parish bulletin going. That's still going. Right. When I was on the Parents Association at St. David's School, we had a newsletter going called Chalk Dust. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's still going. I actually don't know, but it, it did continue for a number yeah. of years. Okay, we have the twinning that I'm involved in now. I'd like to see that going. Yeah. So I am very conscious that I can't do it forever and that the things that I do care about and that I am interested in will have a life after I've gone. Right. Well, here's hoping because I know there are good people out there who are still, you know, kind of involved as you are with just trying to make things better in the town. You look at, you know, people like Ross McParland and, oh. and others who are just who are just the, trying to not so much gain, but trying to figure the town. Yeah. People, all the clubs. I sure. mean, you can see it now. We'll see it with the St. Patrick's Day parade coming up. Yeah. I mean, you've been there, Paul, and you can see all the different youth groups in the town. Sure. And they don't survive without the parents. And yeah. I'd also send out a special message to the new people who come into the town, you know, read the Wicklow Times, clog on to the Greystones Guide, get the brave people, find out what's going on in the community and join in. Come get involved, join is us. good, yeah. There's so much going on. I mean, it's it's childhood heaven. And it's grown-ups heaven here, too. We, we couldn't live in a better place. But uh, boom. And we should say now, this is, uh, Greystones is better than Boston, right? Because you, you, you pretty made that, you made that choice, really, yourself. You well, realized I'm here. I haven't is. gone back. Anyway. There you go. That's all so I wanted to hear. That's it. <laughs>